Hi guys, welcome to another video. So if you read the title of this video, you might think that this is too good to be true, but I promise you it is not. All right, here it is. So a lot of you that have been gardening for long enough will know exactly what this is, but it is a worm bin. And it's where all of this amazing solid fertilizer comes from. But you also get another amazing fertilizer, which is called leachate, sometimes called worm pea, from all the liquids that come out of the fruit and vegetable scraps that you put in here. So here's just a closer look at both fertilizers that you'll end up with. One of them is worm castings. It's very crumbly. It's oftentimes referred to as black gold because of just how amazing of a fertilizer it is. It's also very gentle on your plants. It won't burn them if you overdo it. But it has everything in it that they need. Beneficial bacteria, nutrients, micronutrients. This is all encompassing. It's really quite amazing. And then the other one is worm leachate, which is essentially the juices out of the fruit and vegetables as the worms consume them that you end up with. But this has all the different nutrients, minerals that the worm castings also have just in liquid form. So it's really both fertilizers, liquid and solid, that your plants are going to need. So you can use these fertilizers in multiple different ways. The worm castings you can use as a top dressing and then as you water, the nutrients will simply leach into the soil, get absorbed that way. You can use them in your potting mixes, both for indoor, outdoor plants. Maybe you want to use it in your raised beds. That's all fine too. But in either case, they're going to build soil. You're adding organic matter. You're adding beneficial bacteria. You're adding all the, all the different fertilizers that your plants are going to need to thrive. This is especially good for vegetables and things like that because it's a bacteria dominated fertilizer. And the worm leachate, you add a little bit of worm leachate to your water, just a little bit will go a long way. And that gives your plants a quick boost. You know, it will get absorbed immediately. It's already broken down and ready to be absorbed. But you can also use it as a foliar feed, add something and add a little bit of it to a pump sprayer. And then you just water your, the top and the underside of the leaves of your plants and then it get absorbed very quickly that way. So it's really versatile. You can use it in a bunch of different ways and it's also free. Now, the only thing that I will say that there might be a little bit of initial setup, you know, because you have to get a, some storage totes like what I had to do. I didn't have them laying around, but if you have them laying around, then it's completely free that way too. So that's great. The only other thing is you probably can't scale this up to acres upon acres if you need that much of it. You know, it is a little bit limit, limited in that way. Unless you really want to go to restaurants and start getting fruit and vegetable scraps and all that stuff. In that case, you can scale it up really as big as you want to. But it might be a little bit limiting that way. It's probably better for a smaller setting. You can stretch out your worm castings a lot farther if you do end up needing to do that for larger spaces. Or maybe you don't happen to have quite enough. And that is just by simply adding some of it to some water. Slosh it around. And then you can also brew this. This is often called worm tea. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do that. It's not really necessary. But this, in essence, will make something very similar to your leachate. It's not quite as concentrated. But this is also a great fertilizer as well. And will make your castings stretch a lot further if need be. Let's harvest some of my worm leachate now to give you a bit of a general idea on how my worm bin works. It is very simple though. It is two storage totes. One of them has holes in it with some fiberglass window screening on top of it to prevent the worms from getting through. Which in future I'd probably recommend that you use landscape fabric instead because the worms can still get through the mesh unfortunately. And then I put some bedding on top of it which in this case if I were to do it again I would use cocoa fiber. This is very coarse, mulched cocoa fiber. But I haven't done it in a long time. I just used the worm castings themselves as bedding, and that's worked out just fine. You may want to start off with some bedding, but once you get established and you have a lot of worm castings, that it probably will be okay to just use that. But anyway, I'm going to lift this off of here now. Now, as you just saw from that clip, 
that worm bin can get pretty heavy, especially as it gets much fuller and you, you may end up just having to harvest it more. But there are also much more intricate designs out there that you can, uh, that you can make yourself in order to make that process a lot easier. And that's probably what I would recommend if you can't lift that thing up or don't want to or, you know, whatever the case may be. I would probably at some point upgrade my worm bin, um, but I just don't currently have it. So I'd recommend that you maybe look it up online. There's a lot of videos online that show you how to make a better worm bin yourself. You can even buy them online if you don't want to make them yourself. So, but in future, if I do end up making a better worm bin, then I'll definitely make a video about it. All right, so there is my worm bin separated. You can see that there's not a lot of leachate in there, so I don't really have to harvest it. But there, you can also see that there's quite a few worms in there. So I'll harvest it anyway, just to get the worms out of there. So what I'm gonna do, set up this container. This is where I keep all of my leachate in. I have a little mesh screen that goes over the top of it, fits it perfectly. That catches all the worms, which I just then put back into the worm bin. Very quick, very easy. Okay. I guess there's a little bit in there. Just like so. There's the worms. What type of worm you use is another topic of discussion. I always use European night crawlers, but you can also use red wigglers. I use European night crawlers because their appetite isn't quite as ferocious, so I can actually keep up with feeding them a lot easier. And they're a little larger, so if you want to use them for fishing, I suppose you could, even though I don't. Just tap it. And there they are, back in the worm bin. I do tend to try to get all the worms out just because I don't want them not have access to food. In which case, I just lift it up. Tap it a couple times. And that generally gets them all back in the worm bin. Now here's a little something extra. You don't have to do this. You still don't have to buy anything if you don't want to. But I do sometimes add a little bit of rock dust. This particular stuff is called azomite. It's basically just a rock dust mineral that has all the micronutrients in it. If you add this to your worm bin, it gives them grit, which helps them digest all the food that you put in there. But it also adds more micronutrients that your fruits and vegetables that you're adding may or may not have. So I just sprinkle a little bit of this on there every once in a while, maybe every couple of months. You really barely have to do this. If you end up buying a bag, a single bag would last you years. So you don't have to do this, but you can. It would just give you a slightly more well-rounded end product and worm castings and, and leachate. It would just have more micronutrients in it and minerals and things like that. Another thing that I get, I get it for free, this right here. This is a bunch of coffee grounds. I get it for free from my local barista, but worms love it. Sprinkle some of this on there. It's very high in nitrogen. It's great stuff. Now, for the sake of just giving you some extra information that I can give you, we just talked about grit. Coffee grounds and azomite or rock dust is a great form of grit. They eat that up and then they use that in order to digest the food that, they eat, that they're eating. The only other one that I can also recommend that you add, and you did already see that, is eggshells. Eggshells they, is a great form of grit as well. It also adds, of course, in the long term, some calcium to it when they do end up getting to really break it down, which does take a while. The other thing is that if you don't want pests, when I first started out, I had a major fruit fly infestation because I wasn't burying my fruit and vegetable scraps. If you bury them, then there's no issues whatsoever. I had, I now currently, I have no problems with fruit flies, pests, or anything like that after I started burying my fruit and vegetable scraps. So I highly recommend that you do the same. It just prevents any type of issues because the fruit flies just can't get to the food, essentially. That's, that's really the goal. So the other thing is odor. There's no odor to, these, to my worm bin. There shouldn't be any odor to the worm bin. If there is an odor, then there's a problem. 
more than likely what at that point what it is is that it's either too wet and this is why you need another bin to have it drain down into a separate tote because that's another thing that I didn't do is I didn't have a second bin and it would just be sitting in the leachate okay that's going to provide an anaerobic environment which is just going to cause essentially very foul smelling a very foul smelling worm bin to avoid that you have the second bin so another thing that you can do too is your bedding your bedding will absorb excess odors and things like that excess uh the, the fluids the leachate it's also a brown material if you're compared if you want to kind of associate it with a compost pile you have your browns and your greens well the bedding is the brown so that kind of offsets any odors as well my goal is is that once my blood meal bone meal fish emulsion all that stuff is gone is to just use the worm casting and the worm leachate as my only source of fertilizer on top of using mulch and all that stuff because that is extremely important mulch everything that's kind of excluded from this but if as far as just adding a strict fertilizer i just want to get down to just using worm castings and just using worm leachate whenever necessary and i think it's very possible because it has everything that your plants need in it especially if you like like we talked about earlier if you give your worms a good balance of fruit and vegetables Maybe you add a little bit of azomite or some coffee grounds every once in a while, possibly some eggshells, just to make sure that they have everything in it because that's going to result into the best quality worm casting and worm leachate that you can possibly get. But as long as you're doing all that, I think you can really just use worm castings and worm leachate as your only source of fertilizer. So I really hope that this convinced you to start your own worm bin if you haven't already. I really think that everybody should have a worm bin because it just prevents a lot of waste from ending up in a landfill and it gives it just a great purpose. It's amazing in the garden. It has so many applications. So everybody, I think, really should have a worm bin. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you coming along and I'll see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer.